Let's talk about how to draw fractions. In this video, we're going to be using bar models and pi models. Knowing how to draw fractions can be very useful, especially for solving fraction word problems. Consider this word problem. Miranda and John each have a cake. Miranda's cake is cut into eight pieces and John's cake is cut into six pieces. Miranda eats two pieces of her cake. John eats one piece of his cake. Who ate more cake? Well, it may be useful to actually draw Miranda's cake and John's cake to help us decide who ate more cake. Let's try drawing a circle to represent Miranda's cake. The problem says that Miranda's cake was cut into eight pieces, so I'm going to cut my circular cake into eight pieces. Now let's draw John's cake. John's cake was cut into six pieces, so let's cut that into six pieces. The problem says that Miranda ate two pieces of her cake, so I'm going to shade in two pieces of her cake. And John only ate one piece, so I'll shade in one piece. It looks like John ate more cake. This is actually incorrect. I haven't drawn my pieces of cake the same size, so my picture has actually led me to the wrong answer. Remember when drawing fractions, all of the pieces of the whole have to be the same size. Let's try that again. This time, I'm going to divide Miranda's cake into eight even pieces. And I'm going to divide John's cake into six even pieces. Now, when I color in two of Miranda's pieces and one of John's, I can see that Miranda actually ate more cake. In this video, I'll show you how to draw fractions so that they can help you find the right answer and not the wrong answer. Let's learn how to draw two types of fraction models. Bar models and pi models. Bar models are a little easier, so let's start with those. Bar models are sort of like a candy bar, so you're gonna want to draw a rectangle. Let's use a bar model to show one half. One half is pretty easy. Our brain likes cutting things in half. It makes sense to us. To draw one half, just draw a line right down the middle of your rectangle. This is an estimation, of course, but get as close to the middle as you can. Now, I'll shade in one of these pieces to show the fraction one half. Now let's try drawing one third. One third is a little trickier than one half. I'm still gonna start with a bar or a rectangle. And to draw one third using a bar model, first I imagine an imaginary line going down the middle of my rectangle. I need to draw two lines in order to cut this into three pieces. One goes a little to the left of my imaginary center line and the other goes a little to the right. Once again, this is an estimation, but I'm trying to make the three pieces of the bar the same size. To show one third, I'll color in one of them. Next, let's draw one fourth. One fourth is actually a lot easier than one third. If you can draw one half, you can draw one fourth. You're gonna start by cutting your bar in half and then cut each half in half. There, now I have fourths. To show one fourth, I'll color in one piece of my bar model. Let's take a look at one fifth. Fifths are tricky. I'll start by drawing my rectangle. And just like I did with thirds, I'm going to imagine once again that an imaginary line is going right down the middle of my rectangle. And then to create fifths, I'm going to draw a line just to the left of my imaginary center line and just to the right. And then I'm going to divide each of these pieces on either end in half. Now 
Now I'll shade in one of these pieces to show one fifth. Let's draw one-sixth. If you can draw one-third, you can draw one-sixth. Start by drawing thirds. Then cut each third in half to show sixths. And shade one of those pieces in to show one-sixth. Finally, let's draw one eighth. One eighth seems like it would be tricky because it has so many pieces, but it's actually one of the easier fractions to draw. Start by cutting your rectangle in half, just like we did when we drew one half, and then cut each of those pieces in half. Now we have fourths, and then cut each of those fourths in half to create eighths. And to show one eighth, we simply need to shade in one of these pieces. One thing to remember when you're drawing fraction bar models is that the whole has to be the same size, especially when you're using them to compare fractions. So for example, if I was comparing one half and one fourth, and I'm trying to use fraction bar models to help me decide which fraction is larger, I would draw one half and I would draw one fourth. Well, using these pictures, I may decide that one half is less than one fourth, but that's actually incorrect. And the problem is that my bar models are different sizes. Let's try that again, making sure that the rectangle for one half and the rectangle for one fourth are the same size and the same length. This time I can see that one half is greater than one fourth. A good way to make sure that your bar models are all the same size and the same length is to actually draw them stacked on top of each other. I draw a big rectangle and then I divide it up into smaller rectangles. Now I've made sure that my bars are all the same length. So when I draw my fractions, I'll be comparing the same whole. Drawing fraction bar models. Just remember to make the bars all the same length. Try stacking your bars. Now let's take a look at using fraction pi models. Pi models are drawn using circles. To draw one half, I'll start by drawing a circle and then I'll just draw a line down the middle to cut my circle in half. There, one half. Let's take a look at how to draw one third using a pi model. Once again, I'll draw a circle, and this time I'm going to draw a line down the middle, but not all the way down. I'm going to stop when I hit the center of the circle. And then I'm going to think about this like drawing a peace sign. One line diagonal out to the side, and then to the other side, like a peace sign but without that center line at the bottom. Then I'll color in one of these pieces to show one third. So just remember that one third is kind of similar to a peace sign. To draw one fourth, start by drawing your circle or your pie. And then just like you did with one half, draw a line down the middle. And then you're gonna draw a horizontal line in the middle. So it's kind of like a plus sign in the middle of a circle. And then color in one piece to show one fourth. Just like with bar models, fifths can be a little tricky, so start by drawing your circle. And I like to think about fifths like a starfish, so kind of like with thirds, draw a line down the middle but only to the center of the circle, 
And then we're gonna draw the starfish's legs coming out to the side a little bit closer than with thirds and then his arms coming out. And of course, this is all an estimation, but just do the best you can to make the pieces equal. It looks like a starfish in the middle of a circle. That's one fifth. Let's take a look at one sixth. Just like with bar models, if you can do thirds, you can do sixths. One way to do this is to actually divide your circle into thirds by drawing that sort of peace sign shape and then you can just cut each piece in half to get sixths. Another way to think about drawing six is to draw a line down the middle of your circle, like when you did halves, and then draw an X on top of that line, just trying really hard to keep all the pieces the same size. So you can draw thirds and cut them in half, or you can do a line and then an X. All right, let's look at drawing one eighth. So once again, start with a circle, line down the middle, line across, and then cut each of those in half by drawing an X shape on top of that plus sign. So eighths are basically a plus sign with an X on top. So when you're drawing fraction pie models, just make sure that each piece of the pie is the same size. Halves are just a line. Thirds are kind of like a peace sign without that bottom middle part. Fourths is like a plus sign in the middle of the circle. To draw fifths, it's kind of like a starfish shape. To draw sixths, it's like a line and then an X on top. And then drawing eighths is like a plus sign with an X on top. In this video, we've been focusing on some common denominators like fifths, sixths, eighths, fourths, thirds. But remember, if you want to draw fractions with larger denominators, like for example, one tenth, you can just draw fifths and then cut each of the pieces in half. So if I want to draw tenths, I draw fifths and then I cut each piece in half. And this works on the bar models and also on the pie models. If I want to draw twelfths, I can start by drawing sixths, and then I can cut each sixth in half. And same with sixteenths. If I wanted to draw sixteenths, I would start by drawing eighths, either on the bar model or the pie model, and I would cut each piece in half. This video was created by La Fontaine of Knowledge. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more, and be sure to check the link in the video description for lesson materials that go along with this video lesson.